Hi everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today we will uh, create sketches. Sketches are the most important things for your drawings, if you ask me. And we will learn from how to prepare a sketch from these pictures like this here in the real pictures or from magazines to digital ones. I have my tea here, I'm ready to go. As I said, please, <laughs> it's so important that don't you don't put any of your drinks on your working desk. And that's what I'm doing. As I said before, uh, today our focus will be on five different ways of creating your sketch before you start filling in and putting in the details. As I said, it's so, so important. If you're ready, let's learn. So the very first method that I want to show you is actually one of the most common ones uh, through grid lines. We will create some grids on the real paper, um, on the real photo. You can always use um, a photocopy of a picture, uh, maybe enlarged one, or whatever you prefer, but it has to be the same size that you're actually going to put on your paper. So here uh, I, ha I chose this photo. I think the message is great, although I don't want to give an advertisement of any <laughs> company. But um, so we, what we will do is basically we will divide this into squares, uh, equal squares, and then we will put this on our drawing paper. The first thing I want to do before I transfer this photo uh, or the picture on my paper, I want to see what the d dimensions are. So I can see this is 18 centimeters or 5 inches, uh, around 5 inches on that line. And I'm looking at her eyes because it's the smallest details, the eyeballs. Um, it's around one centimeter or two centimeters or I would say like one inch. So my intervals will be uh, maybe two centimeters uh, according to the smallest detail in the picture. So as you can see, I'm putting our intervals in. I'm more comfortable with centimeters, but definitely you can do with inches if you want. Doesn't really matter as long as these lines um, are equal in dimensions. And here it's 25 centimeters, so I am now going in and putting my two centimeters marks. And I'm gonna go fast forward from here, guys, um, after I put in all these marks because I'm gonna create all the grids. After I create grids here, I'm gonna go on my paper and do the exact same thing. Okay, it's ready to go. Now I'm taking my paper um, and I'm doing the exact same same thing with my ruler. I'm grabbing my ruler and I'm putting down 25 centimeters by 19. And I'm doing all the same grids. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is um, also, oh yeah, we have to number these things so you can actually have a reference number. I'm putting A, B, C, D at the top and one, two, three, four, the numbers on, on the left column, on the Y dimension. Now I'm ready to go. Okay, so you can start anywhere you want, but I usually like to start, I, I want to show you if you have never done this before from, from the hair. So B1, look at here, it's a little bit curved at the end of the lower right corner, I put it in. And when I look at 1C, I see like another curve going just in the middle of the box. You only look at those specific boxes, guys. You don't look at like the whole picture, but you're only concentrating on your own box. I mean, F1, as you can see that it's in the middle of that line. Uh, the hair line is going down to the box G. Uh, there's nothing on 1H, so I'm leaving it blank. And I'm looking at 2G. 
I made this little triangle on the right upper right corner. Now I'm going down to 2H, which is like, again, one third of the box is with a curved line. That's what I'm doing, guys. Like, okay, what's the proportion of that entering line and how much of the box is full? And then on the left, as you can see, as I go down and for A, there's not much hair, just a little bit of line. And on 5A, the ear starts. So I'm looking at it because I'm blind. <laughs> so 5A has the ear, but not all of it. As you can see, it's just a little bit of it on the right bottom corner. And I added that in and I switch back to the right. This is what uh, this is something I commonly do. If I don't if I get bored of one side, I switch to the other side because drawing needs to be fun. So apparently I bored I got bored <laughs> here and uh, here there's this little bun in the hair and H is full of hair, the H4. So H5 has this half box full of hair though. So now I'm putting that in all being you know strict with all these proportions that I see uh, in my reference picture reference pictures are very very important and um, we need to stay loyal to it um, five for realistic portraits of course five H I see the the ear is there also but I wanted to first draw um, the hairline and now I can place my ear in but I made a mistake here I put the ear too big in the reference photo you see that actually ear only comes down to the middle of the box but in my picture I did a little bit bigger and longer than that so I'm gonna erase that and I'm gonna show you actually what how it's supposed to happen Sorry for the sniffing. I have allergies so bad. Okay, yes. There we go. We put the ear in. We are not putting in too much details as this is just the sketch. Uh, our purpose here is to show you how to transfer this photo on this paper. So please don't look for uh, realistic details as I'm not gonna complete or finish this picture at all so I'm going down I'm going up with uh, the details of the hair uh, I'm looking at F2 and you can see again this curved line which is exactly finishing the corner E <laughs> hairline is following my line so that's great there's just like um, hair partition and uh, top part and then I'm going down and the hairline finishes around 4B, so that's where I finish it. Let me continue with the ear. The ear continues on the 6A and then 6B and then 7B. And the face line follows that as well. If you look at 7B, for example, the face line is right in the middle of the box. Um, and I, I follow the exact curvature. I don't know which part is most difficult for you guys, but every artist have difficulty with one uh, facial organ. <laughs> Mine is the nose. I don't know why when I have when I have to draw uh, Noses, I always like make a mistake. I, I raise a redo you will realize in my drawings with you guys So just a heads up <laughs> Here I'm following again uh, the face line upwards I'm almost there. I'm gonna do the second ear right now. The ear starts on um, 7 H with the pretty earring I'm doing that and I'm gonna combine these two lines as it's shown in H6 
Okay, now we have a very good outline of the face, but look at the neckline here on the left. It starts right exactly where mm, C9 is, and it's like one fourth of the box. Uh, and it goes directly below to the half of the box. And then I see this line going down. And exactly the same thing for G9. It's like maybe one fifth of the box or so. It goes directly below the face. It comes down. Yep, just like that. Clothing. As you can see, the clothing starts a little bit behind the neck, uh, so and in the middle of the box. So I'm just gonna do right that. Perfect. And the same thing for the right size. I'm looking at it. I see it is in the box H9. I'm following just my reference photo. I'm not doing anything else, guys. This one is fun to actually draw. You see this arc right here, all around diagonal for the box. And then I'm following this line, one third, one third, and towards the end, it's like half, almost half of the square. And then I'm going back up. Nice. Now I am ready to put in, of course I should do this first, put in the de details, eyes, and uh, I usually start with the left eye, I don't know why, everybody's different, but especially when I try to fill in the colors because my, because you have always have the danger to smear all this charcoal. I will start from the left upper part and going down, but we don't have that risk right now. I'm looking at the eye and the eye start, it's in the basically C5, but a where in C5, where is the upper eye lid and where do you see the eye line in the lower part? These are the borders that we definitely need to uh, see clearly and put it on our paper. An eye is a complex structure. As you can see, there's a line on top of the eye and there's another line, uh, many lines actually under the eye. So it is important to put them in the right place because we have two of them and they have to match. So the eyeball starts on the almost middle of C5. I'm putting it right there. And the other part of the eyeball border is right on the C5 to D5 uh, box border. I'm putting that in as well. After a while, I'm gonna do the fast forward guys so you don't get bored, but I want to show you this. It's important, especially the eyes. So this eye, the line upper eye of the upper eye is going around this place because I can see the C4, C5 line. It includes that line. Again, I'm not putting in too much detail. It doesn't have to look pretty. The sketch is not going to tell you if you have a pretty picture in the end or not. This is just the skeleton of your artwork. Now I fast forward it here for you guys so you can actually uh, see all the process. I put the nose in and the lips in and the right eye. Here, um, the right eye is also important because you don't want your uh, person portrait to have crossed eyes. <laughs> so I usually measure between the two eyes uh, how many centimeters between eyeball to eyeball or from the right border to left border of the eyeball. So I just go and measure and then I put it in. That kind of saves me the fact that they are not looking into different direction. 
in my early drawings when I started drawing I made that mistake a lot so once uh, that eye is in you can fill in all the rest of the detail and the eyebrow of course it starts from 4E goes through 4G that's it it's looking pretty good so now that I, my sketch is ready a rough sketch now uh, <laughs> the worst part for me is erasing all those lines and as you can see because I used the darker pencil on the original photo I accidentally used a darker pencil on the sketch as well which you shouldn't do uh, do what I say, don't do what I do. <laughs> um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and erase those lines. That's the fun part. And I will see you afterwards. We will see what it looks like in the end. Oh, uh, that was a marathon. <laughs> okay, even though we don't like this erasing part and it creates such a mess too. Um, again, I do believe this is one of the best methods to uh, transfer this reference photo on your paper in the best proportions. A lot of uh, artists use this method. That's why I wanted to show you as the first method but there are, of course, there are so many, and I'm gonna show you five of them. This was the first one, and uh, I'm gonna talk to you about the second one in my next scene, which will also include how to make a smaller photo onto a big pay transfer on a big paper. Here we go, we have this cute little cow <laughs> on our left, this is our reference photo and this is my paper. Okay, what I'm holding here is basically uh, help up me to um, create proportions. So from a real life object, let's say this long, I can actually, uh, that I see from far, I can transfer it on my paper uh, in a you know equal proportions size like in a much bigger uh, scale on my paper so this photo is small relatively small I chose it on purpose what I'm gonna do is again I'm gonna um, draw lines uh, here as a frame first but I'm not measuring it this time I don't care how many centimeters it is Okay, now I am drawing this diagonal line here first. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to have at the center one vertical and one horizontal line and I'm done. I don't have to do all those grids. And of course, I'm going to do the exact same thing on my paper, but the size is going to be different because I'm going to um, enlarge this photo on my paper in my drawing. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it by using this tool, this awesome tool. So again, I'm not really uh, careful about how many centimeters, how many inches, 
I'm drawing right there. It's just something bigger where whatever I want to put my picture in. So it was actually originally 19 to 13, but I'm going to go 25 to 19, for example. I just added six more just to make it bigger. Now we can start. Uh, we need our proportional divider for that. I'm grabbing it and uh, in this proportional divider you can see that there's just this little clinch here. I can actually remove it and wherever you put it in those holes it decides on the proportion. Do you want a 2 to 4, 1 to 6, you know, and um, I'm not gonna have much difference in terms of size, so I'm just gonna put it on the third um, hole. You actually can put it as far as this much, which is great. You can even turn into one rice into a much bigger uh, picture on your drawing with this. It's great. I really like the proportional divider. I think it's really useful when you want to create uh, small photos or pictures on your drawing paper. Now I'm putting the uh, clinch back in. We are ready to go. It's the third one I put, as I said, because uh, I don't need a lot of scaling. On the side, I am going, this is very important, guys, from center to the end of the ear and I'm turning my divider, proportional divider. Let me show you one more time. And from different angles too. So I'm putting it here and I forgot to, sorry guys. I'm turning it this way and I'm marking it. This is where the ear ends. Perfect. Again, from the center, now the other ear. I'm, it's pretty st stiff guys so it doesn't have it doesn't slide you have the exact proportions I'm marking it where the ear ends now the head where does the head ends from the center I'm measuring it I'm turning my divider and from the other side I'm putting in just like that I have multiple dots in this way. Where does the eye start? Or where, where, where does the eye finish? I mark all these dots. Everybody has different way of putting these dots. What, which points are important to you? Um, but main focus points in this cow photo is basically the eyes and the nose, the, the ears, right? So all these, once all these dots are in, I start drawing all the ear, looking at my reference photo, and I make sure I have the right proportions. Again, double checking, especially with the eyes, I want them al aligned. And once I finish all the basic drawing, basic outlines, this is how it's gonna look, guys. Perfect. Now the rest of it is basically erasing and it's not as difficult as the grid one because you don't have that much that, that, that many lines this time. Perfect. We are on to our next method for creating a sketch now. Oh little cow looks so cute. Once you put in details, this is going to look great, guys. Let's look at our uh, other method now, again, from a photo. Hi, guys. We are together again with the third method to transfer an original photo onto your paper. And we have this very beautiful ostrich on our left. Um, and this is what we're going to work on today because 
our friend is very hairy. It's going to be a little bit difficult sketch because we don't put the hairs in the sketch that much. It comes with the drawing, but I want to just show you the basics of this method. I think uh, this is a little bit more difficult for me um, when a lot of other artists also prefer this one basically what you do uh, here you're measuring and putting all the dots let's say now I'm I'm drawing the, the borders I that I measured around the picture first and then from these borders I'm going to measure how many inches for example the eye is away from the left border or or nostrils like how far it is from the left corner or left um, side from the upper side so I'm trying to put all these dots by measuring one by one so it's like a combination of the grid method and the dots method but for me it takes more time honestly if I'm gonna put in time into this I might as well put the same time in the grid method but I'm going to show you now. Let's look at where the head starts. 5.5 centimeters around in the middle of my paper. So that's what I'm going to do. But I'm also want to see if it's really in the middle. See, it's not. It's 8.5. So I mark 8.5 to 9 ish. And then I do. 5.5 on there and I put my dark uh, dot there and then I look where the top of the hat starts to curve down uh, how far is it from the left border of my paper it's around one centimeter I would say like one third of an inch and then I put my dot there Again, it depends on you where you want to put the dots in because then after you put these dots in, you are the one who will put all the details in. So whatever makes your job easier, guys. And where does the beak start? From the upper border. I put just that in. And then I draw a little bit so you can see what I'm what, what are those dots for this is how actually the head comes and between the eyes the eye thickness like how, how big it is all these things need to be dotted <laughs> basically it is uh, a little bit um, as I said, like a time wasting, so I'm gonna fast forward it soon. But the important dots here would be the neck, the start of the beak, the end of the beak, and uh, the eyes, of course, how they are apart from each other, how um, they're close to the borders. That's what we need to measure and put it in. See, the neck starts with five centimeters from the left and 12.5 centimeters from the other side. So now I know exact proportions and neck is the easy thing to draw here. Whereas the beak is not, <laughs> the mouth and the nose is not as easy as it looks. So where the eye starts on the right, I'm trying to find out. And whenever something looks off, guys, in your sketch, don't don't hesitate to go and measure again and because Honestly, once you put in everything right in the sketch, really, uh, it's hard. It's very 
difficult to fix it later when you fill in and when you do all the charcoals and so it's easier and it, it makes more sense to spend time on your sketch first get all the measurements right and then start your drawing now our <laughs> beautiful ostrich is coming along reminds me of Sid from Ice Age right now <laughs> anyhow it's all good this is another way Let's see how we can transfer digital photos on our papers now, not actual photos. Coming up soon! The fourth method is very easy. You open an empty uh, PowerPoint slide, erase all those boxes you have first, okay? And then you'll go to the design and then slide size. And you will say custom in the custom slide size you want to enter uh, exactly the same um, proportions that your drawing paper has mine is 9 to 12 so I'm gonna put 12 here and I'm gonna put 9 here and I'm gonna put both uh, orientation as landscape and I'm gonna say enter fit when it asks me how I want my new slide okay now I have my perfectly sized slide now I go to um, view and I want my ruler yes and I want my grid lines which gives me all those grids that I'm asking for do I need guides not really so I don't have to turn that on so now I can, I'm ready to put in my picture I go insert pictures and I'm gonna have my beautiful photo of Jon Snow and once the picture is there you will see all these grids looking beautifully on it but not visible enough so I'm gonna make these lines more visible now for myself because these are for a blind person as I am are not as good so I go to the insert shapes line and I'm following exact lines right here but this blue is not very good at visible not very visible either so I'm making it a bit thicker and the color is not good not very good not very visible so I'm changing it to red after I change it to red I'm gonna copy the same uh, line and paste it all over on um, on these squares as you can see on these lines now it's all ready to go but I've, I still need the numbers uh, labels so I go to insert text box and I insert the text box in the very first box on the upper left and um, you can put A, B, C, D, you can put 1, 2, 3, it's all up to you, this is all your drawing, this is all your sketch guys so I just put the numbers on the top this time so I'm choosing one but because it's a black and white picture in order to make it like more visible I make it white bold and I copy this text box and paste it in the second box and I put in two and then three and then four um, so basically a lot of copy pasting which saves me a lot of time and that's why I like PowerPoint I love PowerPoint in general I can create so many th good things with PowerPoint which I'm gonna show you later actually so here we go here we can put our numbers I'm gonna fast forward from here and here we put a b c d all our letterings perfect our photo is ready to go on your paper as a sketch one more method guys so this one probably uh, the easiest as it seems I have this picture on my computer and the exposure and the contrast has been increased I kind of played with the adjusted the screen settings now I'm putting my drawing paper on it and I am basically drawing the outlines without pressuring uh, applying pressure on my pencil because you don't want to damage your monitor I don't find this as uh, I don't 
think this is a wrong thing to do because with the grid method actually you're doing exactly the same thing anyway so why not do this if this is the easier for you and this is just a very simple sketch and it's more most important to have it in the right proportions I'm ready to go I hope you found this video helpful guys see you soon in my next video